Well, here we go, Microsoft's next major move towards PC gaming. It's actually quite bullish, one that's not wholly unexpected, but one that's also came with a little bit of shade being thrown. Who at? Well, of course, Epic Games. Hey everyone and welcome back to another Industry Report, the near daily news show where we examine the most important moves in the gaming scene, so be sure to subscribe and ring that bell, and with that, Microsoft have announced the next stage of their PC gaming plan, something which is both indicative of industry trends, but also their broader push into gaming, expanding things past just their console. They have announced three different things, one which has a bit of a snipe at Epic, and then with the other two also making a great deal of sense. First, Xbox Game Pass. So this is their subscription service that gives people access to a large library of games for a monthly subscription. It's similar to EA's Origin Access, just that there's one tier and seemingly quite a bit more content to it. Microsoft said that they see an opportunity for the PC platform, that they think Game Pass will be additive to the PC ecosystem. So they've announced that Xbox Game Pass will be expanded to PC. It's going to launch with a library of over 100 games, including support from a wide range of publishers. We've got Bethesda, Deep Silver, Devolver Digital, Paradox, Sega, plus some others. They then also said that their new first-party titles will have a simultaneous launch with Game Pass, and they also pointed out that that will include Obsidian and In Exile, which is interesting. Of course, the latter is a respected PC dev, and Obsidian, well, they're Obsidian, and that does make one wonder if this means the Outer Worlds will be on PC through this, and not just the Epic Games Store. Uh, which certainly is quite a topic, one that we will hit later in this video. All in, they say they are working with 75 publishers and developers to add content to the service, with a plan being to add new games to it every month, including on the PC platform. Then also, people with Game Pass will also get a 20% discount on Microsoft Store games and a 10% discount on DLC. Now, overall, I'd say that seeing Paradox and Devolver there is pretty interesting. I definitely wonder if Microsoft are more willing to, uh, well, to fork this off from the console version of Game Pass actually having some PC exclusive titles being on the um, PC version of Game Pass, I actually think it would make a lot of sense for them. After all, if an Xbox One user gets access to a PC-only title, that's just going to encourage them to use Windows 10, which, of course, Microsoft already owns. So there's that. But there is one large downside. It's that it will run through the Windows Store. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Their recent updates to the game bar have made the overlay less bad, but it's not ideal overall. However, that said, there's not really any other way they could have Game Pass exist outside of their own platform. I mean, if that were true, then they'd either just be exploiting off Steam, not charging for activations, or they would have to strike a deal with external stores. So, okay, there's that. Now, speaking of external stores, this is where things do get just a little bit more spicy. Here's the quote, We believe you should have choice in where you buy your PC games. Yeah, they couldn't make that one more clear, could they? Given the recent backlash to the Epic Games Store and its exclusives, well, they seem to have written that quite knowingly. It's an easy PR win, to be sure, and they likely know that it will endear them to the PC gaming audience. So, they've announced that they intend to make their Xbox Game Studio PC games available through multiple stores, including the Microsoft one at launch, saying that uh, they think you should have the choice. They later go on to say this, quote, We know millions of PC gamers trust Steam as a great source to buy PC games, and we've heard the feedback that PC gamers would like choice. We also know there are other stores on PC, and we are working to enable more choice in which store you can find our Xbox Studio titles in the future. Now, that's an interesting statement. Here's why. The Outer Worlds is made by Obsidian. Obsidian are now owned by Microsoft. It seems that the Epic Games Store PC-timed exclusivity for The Outer Worlds was locked in like before the point at which Obsidian was actually purchased by Microsoft. But when you read that statement, it seems like Microsoft are somewhat saying that they will be working to change that. Now note that they didn't literally say that, that's just my interpretation of their wording, but it seems to make sense. And it's an interesting position for Microsoft. I mean, the optics here are great. And, I mean, yeah, it is true that by selling on Steam, they also do just give up 30% of revenue, but equally, 
Well, they also know that the Windows Store is not loved, it's not widely adopted, and they even have proof. Previous releases have suffered for being in that store, with the likes of, say, Quantum Break going on to be far more successful after they got a Steam release. They then also talked about a number of their upcoming titles, so Halo Master Chief Collection will come to PC both on the Microsoft Store and on Steam. They're also going to add more Xbox titles to Steam, including the Age of Empires 1, 2, and 3 Definitive Editions, as well as Gears of War 5. So that presumably will be their model going forward, and they did say that they are doing this with 20 games, so presumably we'll see the likes of Forza move over to Steam as well. I certainly think that would uh, just overall be a very good thing. While it is true that they're mostly doing this because they know Windows Store only sales would be rubbish, it still is nice to see them come out with fairly pro-consumer communications regarding this whole thing. And then past that, it's also worth noting that the likes of the Master Chief Collection and the other first-party titles will be included under Game Pass. Uh, so, of course, you know, that's fine if you're okay with using the Windows Store. And then finally, they actually committed to supporting Win32 games on the Windows 10 Store. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, it basically means that non-UWP games can be put on that store. So, i.e., you know, like a regular game in the same format that you'd grab it off Steam. Not the Microsoft-favored UWP platform that they tried and really failed to drive adoption of through their store. This also will mean less steps for developers getting onto that store, which, I mean, is good, but not really that many gamers actually want to use that store, and um, just also games on that store being better, as developers would have more customization and control over their software. Is this opaque sort of techy stuff? Yes. Is it a good move? Absolutely. And then finally, on the topic of the Master Chief Collection, it will be playable to testers in June. That will pave the way for a release later on this year. Now, the tests were actually delayed from April, with the team citing just a number of PC things that they wanted to shore up, saying that they want want to do it right and deliver what PC users expect, and, well, I'm dead excited for that. And really, all of their communications have been on point with Master Chief Collection on PC. I mean, they've even been really good with working with modders, and that's something that typically would not happen with a situation like that one. So let's hop over to analysis. Game Pass is probably going to be a pretty solid deal. It already is a good deal on Xbox, and I imagine that will continue on the PC, especially because they seem to have quite a lot of third-party support. Now, this also ties into something we covered recently for Microsoft, Project xCloud. They said that xCloud can support thousands of games because of how developer-friendly it is. It's basically very easy to get anything that will run on an Xbox going on xCloud. Well, xCloud plus Game Pass seems to be quite a good situation. It would give you a large library of streaming games to play on just about any device, including, say, you know, your low-power 13-inch laptop that otherwise could not play intense games. So again, that's something that would be pretty good in PC. Seeing yet another subscription, though, with Game Pass, that's, of course, interesting. I mean, well, another subscription for the PC platform. PC gamers will now be able to choose between uh, Game Pass and EA's Origin Access. Uh, First-party titles aside, I'll be very interested to see how much overlap there is in the third-party titles for each. Indeed, it'll be interesting to just see like the rate at which new third-party titles hit Game Pass. Presumably, Microsoft could cut a few deals to like sweeten the pot, so, you know, maybe the third-party game is coming out, it might launch simultaneously on Steam, but also Game Pass. Not sure if they'll do that, but it certainly would be a good way to bolster up Game Pass. Now, it's also notable that Ubisoft were not included in this press release. Now, Ubisoft, of course, could work with Game Pass, that's totally possible, but but we recently did have rumors that they are planning to launch their own subscription service, and that would make them partnering with Microsoft on Game Pass, well, a pretty darn bad idea. Indeed, Ubisoft actually did work with Google on Stadia with Assassin's Creed, so presumably we'll see Ubisoft not beyond Microsoft's xCloud. And that does actually make me wonder. Broadly speaking, will we be dealing with two streaming alliances, Google Stadia versus Microsoft's xCloud and Sony's PS Now? Why do I say Microsoft and Sony? Well, remember that the two companies recently signed a memorandum of cooperation that included working together on streaming technology. Yeah, Sony like using Microsoft Azure. One has to wonder if they see Google as a bit of a threat, and if they're kind of coming together to meet the threat of Stadia, and if we'll then just see Stadia compete with them when it comes to securing third-party publisher content. Of course, on that front, Microsoft do seem to have a pretty good head start. Game Pass is already a hell of a deal, with them seemingly being quite happy with themselves. I think about a month or two ago, a marketing exec said that, sure, Stadia's got a platform and all that, and all the tech stuff that it can do, but xCloud has content. 
Uh, they recently, of course, said that xCloud can run thousands of games with basically no extra effort from the dev. Of course, it'll be odd for consumers, a bit like choosing between Netflix, Amazon Prime, or, you know, you know Hulu, uh, HBO Go, Now TV if you're in the UK. It could be quite a mess, but right now, Microsoft seem to have the largest amount of content. Seemingly, Microsoft are just fine with users having Game Pass and a Windows 10 PC, and then maybe a PS5 for its exclusives, or maybe having a PS5 and then just, uh, you know, Game Pass stuff being streamed through a laptop and xCloud. The industry landscape sure does seem to be shifting as we're seeing more groups move towards subscription and streaming services. It's probably going to be okay or maybe good for consumers for a while, but then I just have to wonder, will it devolve into the current mess that we have with streaming television, where we just find ourselves subscribing, you know, a month here, a month there on different services, or for many people, just raising the black flag, because let's be real, Piracy is actually something that is increasing again in light of the services being fragmented and regional restrictions. Of course, it's what Gaben says, isn't it? Piracy is a bit of a service problem, and sure, Netflix was great at the start, but when the services become less, uh, less good because of the bizarre form of competition through exclusives, which of course we're already seeing with the Epic Games Store and all that stuff, uh, then yeah, that can kind of cause piracy to tick up again. So, so yeah, there you go. I'd love to hear what you think about all of this, uh, all of this stuff. Would you be interested in Game Pass? Does it seem like a good deal? Um, yeah, just please let me know what you think down below. Thank you very much for watching this video, and with that, I'll see you next time.